Multiclassing, as you probably know, can bring a lot of strange combinations, but I think one of the most interesting and useful is actually a combination of my favorite class and one that I've maybe played once, the Bard Barian. Bard Barians are slaps of tanky meat and bards are premier skill, roleplay, and ally support class. So combining them surprisingly does not rob either of their essence. Stay tuned for today's episode if you want to be able to strike a chord as well as your opponent. There are two main paths when combining Bard and Barbarian. The first is actually just a well-rounded character with a lot of gameplay options. The Barbarian class is very combat-oriented, with very little to do out of combat, and roleplay-heavy sessions can turn into a usual grind. The Bard can be good in combat, but most of its features surround skills, roleplay, and buffing up your allies that are actually in combat. Put them together and you're a true jack-of-all-trades. Excellent in every situation, with resistance to physical damage and more hit points than you can shake a loot at. The second path is the Grapple Master. The Barbarian and Bard features can be uniquely lined up to create a wrestling god that can grab and toss around demons with an almost irresistible grapple. You can't cast spells or concentrate on them while raging, so in combat you really have to choose between raging and spellcasting. You can still use your bardic inspirations while raging, so you're still getting utility out of your bard half, it's just not a clean mesh of your abilities. And if you're going the grapple route, a lot of enemies have easy solutions to the grappling strategy. Sure, it will completely wreck some monsters, but sometimes it just won't work. Many late-level enemies are too large to grapple or have some magical way to evade you. The Barbarian build can be uniquely useful, but it's not a massive power build like some other multi-class combinations. Like other multi-classes, you might be wondering when this actually starts to kick in. And there's no specific feature synergy if you're just multi-classing Bard and Barbarian in general. There is a specific kick-in level if you're going for the ultimate grappling build, though. And that's technically 4th or 8th level, depending on how you look at it. By 4th level, you'll have both Rage and the Lore Bard's increases to your Athletics checks. So you could count that as kicking in, I suppose. I'd really only consider it functioning properly, though, once you've gotten to the 3rd level of Bard and you've gotten up to 5th level for Barbarian for that extra attack. Once you have all that, you'll be able to grapple and shove an opponent all in the same turn, and that's where the game plan really kicks in. So which one do you take first? You could technically take either, but I recommend going Bard for your very first level. Bards get any three skills at first level, and you don't really lose anything taking Barbarian second. The major difference is your skills, and your saving throws. Both paths will work out fine, but I think you'll get more utility out of the initial Bard level. The more vanilla version of Bardbarian doesn't have any specific features to mesh into one another, so what features you care about are really up to you. Starting with stuff that will appeal to the grapple gods, there's Rage. Which is why most people multiclass in Barbarian, but we're going for a lesser known aspect of Rage. Rage grants you advantage on all strength checks, which is conveniently what grappling uses for both grapple check and the shove attack. So as long as we're raging, we're basically getting constant advantage on everything we're doing. And we're still gaining all the other good stuff Rage normally gets us, like extra damage and the resistance to the most common damage caused by incoming enemy attacks. There's also extra attack. The grappling strategy really relies on grappling and shoving a creature in the same turn, which means we really want a second attack so that we can do everything on the same turn. Another extra is extra movement. Our game plan is to grab somebody, shove them prone, and then either punch them to death or drag them into something that's deadly, like a cliff, or a campfire, or lava, or the sea. Our movement is halved while dragging our unfortunate friend along, is the point, so every little bit of extra movement helps us get where we need to be. And then there's spellcasting. Raging mostly locks spells out of combat for you since you can't cast or concentrate on them while mad. For the most part, you'll be using spells for out-of-combat utility and tricks, which is fine, but there are a few very interesting spells that can benefit from a combat perspective that don't take your actions or your concentration. More on that in a second. And then one of my favorite features is Bardic Inspiration. Your Bardic Inspirations fall between the cracks of what counts as spellcasting, and by the rules as written, there's nothing stopping you from bellowing war cries mid-rage and providing your allies with some muscle-bound inspiration. This is something I refer to as the Jack Black Maneuver. With Expertise, we're on the quest to get our strength, well, athletics, checks as high as possible for grappling and shoving. Expertise lets us get double our proficiency bonus on athletics, drastically pushing up our max grappling rolls. And then we have Cutting Words, and we're getting this from the College of Lore Bard archetype. 
but this third level archetype feature lets you use a reaction and use a bardic inspiration to mess up somebody else's roll. Why we want it in particular is the ability to cut our target's opposing roll to escape or avoid our grapples and shoves. With this, the odds of anything avoiding your grapple drops drastically. Since you'll likely be going for a full martial strategy, and your spellcasting is taking a bit of a back seat here, you'll want your two highest ability scores to be Strength and Constitution. You'll want both scores to get a 16 ability score as quickly as possible, and if you can manage it, try to get up to 18 in Strength. Then you'll need a decent Charisma. And you can really get by with as low as 12 Charisma, but I'd recommend working it up to 14. This sounds like acting advice someone gave to Jai Courtney. Anyway, any higher than that and you're sacrificing too much in strength and constitution. There aren't really any specific feats needed for this build, so unless you're trying to work something extra into the concept, I'd say focus on your ability scores entirely. Because we don't need all that much charisma, we can really pick our races just as if we were playing a barbarian. That means we need races that grant some combination of strength and constitution. Starting with the dwarves, they get a plus two to constitution so they are tough enough to fight without armor. Their dark vision is helpful to any class, as is the resistance to poison granted by dwarven resilience. Mountain dwarves also get plus two to strength, making them even better choices as barbarians. And then we have the Earth Genasi subtype, which gets plus two to constitution and plus one to strength. These rocky boys get a once per long rest pass without trace casting that can let your barbarian travel surprisingly stealthily. It's a bit situational, but you'll also be able to ignore rocky, difficult terrain, which can be the difference between getting into melee or playing catch-up. And then we have a pretty obvious choice, the Goliath. These mountain giants get plus two to strength and plus one to charisma. Goliaths seem tailor-made as natural barbarians in both stats and lore. Their stone's endurance ability will shrug off a good chunk of damage between each short rest, making your barbarian even more survivable. With the Half-Orc, you'll get plus two to Strength and plus one to Constitution, Dark Vision, and learn Intimidate for free thanks to their menacing racial feature. Both the extra critical from Savage Attacks and defensive help from Relentless Endurance are also pretty helpful to any Barbarian. Perhaps my favorite just in concept is the Leonin. These Mighty Lions get plus two to Constitution and plus one to Strength. Beyond the strong ability lineup, they have a base movement speed of 35 feet, which will stack with the movement bonuses Barbarians already get and an ability that opens up an astonishing amount of roleplay opportunity, they also get a Daunting Roar, which inflicts the Frightened Condition as a bonus action using your Constitution modifier on the DC. And another cool choice is the Minotaur, which get plus two to Strength and plus one to Constitution. Sadly, most of the cool stuff Minotaurs get use a bonus action, which means you can't rage and do them in the same turn. However, once you are raging, you also get some amazing utility in Goring Rush, That'll let you dash and attack, and hammering horns gives you some free shove attacks. And this needs to be here just because I love the idea of a musical orc who get plus two to strength and plus one to constitution. They get a lot of the same abilities as half orcs, but you'll trade out the damage potential of savage attacks for the ability to easily close the distance between yourself and your foes with aggressive. And then we have the beast hide shifter. These guys get plus two to constitution and plus one to strength. You'll also get the enhanced form of the temporary hit points gained from shifting, which will make your barbarian much more survivable. Plus one to AC when shifted as well, and a rare flat AC bonus is nothing to sneeze at. Beast Hide Shifter is a good choice if your goal as a barbarian is simply not dying. And once again, an unconventional choice is the Triton, which get plus one to strength, plus one to constitution, and plus one to charisma. The Charisma bonus is somewhat wasted, but you're still getting boosts to both Strength and Constitution here. Beyond that, they get a Swim Speed and the ability to breathe underwater, some fun racial spells, resistance to cold damage, and the cherry on top is definitely Dark Vision. A Barbarian build that I have a lot of experience with was made on a Warforged. His nickname was Music Box. I wish that I could claim that I came up with that. But anyway, Warforged get plus two to Constitution and can choose an optional plus one to Strength. Being a robot has its perks, and the non-living bonuses from Constructed Resilience come in handy. You get immunity to disease, you don't need food, water, or air, and to top it off, you get resistance to poison and a plus one to AC bonus. I'm going to make this section really quick. You might rightfully assume that if you're going for the whole grappling thing that you would need the grappler feat. I would say no. Uh, this feat is bad. It's badly designed. You don't need it. Don't don't waste your time on it. 
As with any multi-class, there's an optimal path for advancing your character and ultimately a correct ratio of levels from each class. The Barbarian really comes online with five levels of Barbarian and three levels of Bard. This will get us all the features we need to grapple with the best of them, and we're also not going to get much out of the further Bard levels for the grappling plan, so you're best off finishing out your character with more Barbarian levels. I've seen a lot of different versions, but they boil down to either prioritizing getting online as soon as possible, or prioritizing optimal ASI progression. So really, the question comes down to if you're willing to miss out on optimal ASI to get online quicker. This progression has a bit of a back and forth, but this gets us to operational grappling the earliest before hitting optimized grappling. Keep in mind that extra bard levels will increase the power and frequency of your cutting words, but more barbarian levels add to raw damage and power. And since the main benefit of the late levels in bard are more spells and spellcasting, which we can't use much of, I tend to recommend going for barb levels over bard levels for the late game. None of the Barbarian archetypes add much specifically or really add anything to our grappling strategy, but there are a few that can take advantage of getting in close or help us close the distance. Path of the Storm Herald really wants to be in close to the enemy to deal damage with either the desert or sea options. Our master grappler is doing its best to get in fast and stay there so it's a decent fit. I tend to prefer the sea option so that I don't have to worry about proximity with my allies. And then there's Path of the Totem Warrior. Most people when going for Totem Warrior go with the Bear Totem for the near full coverage of every damage type. We actually want to go for the often passed up Elk option to get even more speed. We want to grab somebody and haul them off as quickly as possible, and that extra 15 feet of movement, even if halved while grappling, is particularly helpful. To get the most out of our grapple build, there's only one bard archetype that we want to go for, and that's the College of Lore. However, if you're going for more general multiclassing, then the College of Swords is your best bet. With College of Lore, we're getting a ton of skill proficiencies with this archetype, but we're here for the other third level feature, Cutting Words. With Cutting Words, we can dunk on whoever we're grappling and give them a penalty to their attempt to escape our grapple. The later features aren't that helpful, so we're really just dipping our toes in here for one specific feature, but it'll be worth its weight in grappling gold. You can also technically get another feature at 14th level and can stack up your athletic skill even higher, but I don't think it's really worth missing out on any barbarian levels for it. And then we have the College of Swords. A Swords Bard won't help you become a grappling god exactly, but it will critically give you a fighting style and can really help you deal damage. I recommend the dueling style as it'll still work well if you do decide to grab somebody, still one of the better strategies. You can also get extra attack feature at 6th level, making this the best option if you plan on going hard on the Bard levels and light on the Barbarian levels. Now, when we say Bardbarian spellcasting, we really mean Bard spellcasting, but we've got to pick and choose carefully since we can't really rage and use spells at the same time. What we can do is use our spells liberally for utility and role-playing stuff outside of combat, and we gain access to healing spells even if we can't use them mid-fight. So consider yourself the utility caster healer of the party out of combat and the meat slab tank once stuff goes down. There are a scant few bard spells though that fit the narrow requirements of a long duration and that require no further spell actions or concentration. I recommend picking up long striders, see invisibility, and motivational speech, all of which can affect combat, you can use them prior to combat, and they don't require any concentration. Anyone who's played D&D with me knows that I absolutely love playing the bard and maybe a monk or an artificer from time to time, but playing the Barbarian is a great way to keep that strong tether to the role-playing opportunities I love without leaving my fellow players as the only viable fighters. This is a multi-class build I can strongly endorse. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe because we put out new videos like this every week. And if you've created a Barbarian that you're proud of or you're building one right now, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. My name is Patrick Ferguson from Skull Splitter Dice, and until next time, farewell.